They found it easy to use, appreciated the security of a paper ballot, and liked seeing their ballots tabulated by the scanner. This election puts to rest the debates inflamed by those in our state, or not in our state, who have looked to sow doubt about our systems and those who have wrongly claimed there's a lack of access to voting. Elections matter. Completing this general election is a huge hurdle crossed, but it's far from the end of our work. We will have, immediately starting uh, today, working towards certifying this election and then preparing for state and local runoff elections on December 1st, and then the September uh, Senate runoff election between Senator Loeffler and Raphael Warnock on January 5th. This will require a monumental effort because we have a short window to get on absentee ballots for the December runoff to give voters time to return them. My team has sent reminders to the counties to get all, let me repeat, all of our results counted today. Every legal vote will count. And I know that many of you probably have some questions. Uh, just. Yeah. You're a supporter of President Trump. You're also a state's top elected official. What do you say to people who are here to the president's speak and are worried that votes counted today, votes counted after election today, aren't in Well, I want everyone to know, the sound of my voice, that every legal vote in Georgia will count. And right now we have about 200,000 ballots that are left to be counted. With the absentee ballot process, uh, we counted worked on scanning those as many as they could. And then there are also about 40 to 50,000 early votes that need to be counted. Every legal vote will be counted. So is the president correct there? We are saying that every legal ballot will be counted in Georgia because that's our process and we follow state law. I hear you say that you want counting to be done today. Is that realistic in counties with tens of thousands of outstanding absentee ballots, counties run elections? I don't, I don't know if they'll get it done today. Have you I know you said you communicated with the counties asking them to complete it today, but is that actually possible? We're pushing really hard for that. If we can get that down, if we don't get it there, but we get the number so small that then there's no question of who actually the winner is, I think that'll be helpful. Really remove a lot of those questions that people might have. Yes, ma'am. When will you make a decision about which race to do a risk-limiting audit on? That'll be something I'll get with our election team, and we'll get that out as soon as we have that information. There's a word that uh, the USPS was supposed to do a sweep of their facilities, make sure all the absentee ballots had been delivered, and that in some places that didn't take place. Do you know if that happened here in Georgia? Is that any concern? Well, it would always be a concern. We want to make sure everything get, gets uh, to us. Uh, don't have anything uh, specific on that. But that's why we also instituted the absentee ballot drop boxes. Our concern actually was that voters would wait too long and then be too late to mail. And that's why we had the absentee ballot drop boxes, which was very well received by uh, voters in Georgia. So you don't have the word that that took place in? This yeah, I don't have anything specific, but as soon as we do, we'll circle back and get that information out. Can I do a quick follow-up about can, your... can I get with this, ma'am? Uh, do you have a breakdown of what counties still need to count their votes? Well, it's, it's several counties, but we know that uh, DeKalb, Fulton, Forsyth, you know, uh, even have 7,000 voters. So it's really, you know, it's something when you have such a large number of absentee voters and then you have some early votes, it's really uh, multiple counties and we're just knocking those down one at a time. Sir, can you speak to the process of absentee ballots? I know this, the timing is kind of a moving So the state election board gave the counties the authority that they could begin the process of scanning the absentee ballots, which is very helpful. So I know that down in Muskogee County and Richmond County, they were really uh, current with everything they had received, but then all of a sudden we also had additional ballots come in on Monday and then Tuesday, so they were being dropped in. So they had to, they had to scan those. And so they'll be uh, getting that as soon as they can, but it is a two-page ballot. It just takes longer. To, to get those ready for the scanning process. Is there another question back there? Secretary, are you able to provide a breakdown of which votes are, which are going to have to explain which counties? Well, I know that right now that we have, uh, uh, my numbers here were 52 to 50, uh, 54,000 in DeKalb. Right now we have 74,000 approximately uh, Fulton County absentees uh, and 43,000 uh, early votes in uh, Fulton County. 
and I have about 7,000 uh, right now in Forsyth. We'll get you the entire list because uh, it's just we make sure we include all the counties. Secretary, can you walk through what the rest of the election process looks like from the military ballots coming in to the auto certification process? What's the next part before we can say we're just certified? Well, the, the next process obviously will be to make sure we get all the all the ballots counted, then also the UOCAVA, the overseas military ballots, you know, to get those in and have them incorporated in the vote totals. We're going to begin the uh, risk limiting audit process later this week, which is really important. So many people uh, are not aware of that. This is the first time we're doing a statewide audit. And so what that will really give you, first of all, we have, I think, a higher confidence of voters. I know there's a lot of information out there, a lot of misinformation out there, and some of it's just lack of knowledge, and we, and we understand that. And that's why the risk limit that audit, what that will do will verify results. So if there's a race that was, say, reported a 51-49, when we do the audit, then we can verify what the result is, and we have over a 90% confidence level. That gives people additional assurance. I think also having that paper ballot, Voters were very uh, comfortable. They just gave them that comfort feeling. They look, looked at it before they cast their ballot, and that's a good thing also. Then by Friday, November 13th, we then will have the certification. So nothing is certain certified until after we do the risk limiting audit. And then with the, uh, with the presidential race, probably going to be so close, and even some down ballot races, maybe. You want to know the if there's a race that was at half percent, it is your right as the candidate that is close but not but not over the top that you could ask for a recount. So we actually could have a, uh, a request for, say, a state representative, county commission race, or any race that's within half percent, and we'll just wait until we get every ballot counted, and that's why it's very important we follow through the process. It'll, it'll be actually pulling out, uh, running those through, and then it'll be actually uh, seeing where that brings us, and then you're looking at the words that are on the on the ballot at some point. Mr. Uh, Secretary, can you explain what you know about what's happening in Kent County? Apparently, there have been some issues with scanning or giving the scanned out of the ballot. Well, if they do, then they'll uh, follow through that. That's the advantage of having the verifiable paper ballot, and you can rescan that. But that's, so that's why if if some of the ballot do kick out, and the reason they kick out is everyone if they don't fill out the ballot correctly or they put an X or they circle a name. That's why we have the adjudication panels of a Republican, Democrat, and then the election official to have three sets of eyes on there to verify that. So we want at least a three, a two, one, uh, you know, adjudication vote on each ballot so we can make sure that we capture the correct voter intent. If there, if there are legal challenges made to votes cast before 7 o'clock yesterday, absentee ballots, will your office and the state defend those ballots against the yeah, we want to make sure that we follow state law. We are always going to look at what is the state law, and that's why Ryan Germany, our legal counsel, can answer any legal questions you have. We, we want to make sure the law is very clear, and we follow the state law, and we don't believe that judges should legislate. Let me just get a quick assessment from you of the timing Oh, no, it's uh, really going much quicker, and that's why we're really pleased with the state election board allowing us to scan that. If you look at some of these states, this morning is when they actually opened up their absentee ballot you know, boxes, and that's when they started actually the process of separating out the absentee ballots. It's a, that's a very extensive process, verifying the signature and going through there, separating it out. We have saved days and days. You're going to be waiting a long time in some of these states, much to many people's consternation because we understand it's a close election. So you're saying this is right on schedule? Yeah, we're doing fine and we're really pleased with it. Uh, we'll be off everyone's radar and they'll be worried about the states up north. Your, your website um, doesn't keep up with the absentee ballot, the progress. Already. Right. Yeah, as it gets reported then it'll be just added to that total. So how do private citizens keep up with that? And it's just because it's a process and we just keep on adding that and then eventually when we have them all done, you'll know that we'll, we'll notify them or put it a note there that these are the final totals for that particular county. We got Yes, sir. Well, yes, last time uh, we actually had about 1%, but of that, uh, probably 0.75, 75% of those rejected ballots were actually received late. 
So very few of those actually were rejected by the adjudication panel. When they actually looked down at that, all three of the folks, or two out of the three folks were saying, yeah, yeah, they really wanted Mary for this, this race here, they really wanted Bob for that race there, and that's a good thing. So very little of the actual ones that get through the adjudication panel are being rejected. So thank you very much. As we get more information, we'll get that to you. Uh, if you have any legal questions, Ryan Germany's here, and uh, we're going to get these results out to you as soon as we can. Thank you very much.